the reason we are discussing this topic uh, is because it's kind of in the news of late because uh, some of the higher judiciary officials were mentioning this. So what is the integrated criminal justice system? Uh, but unlike what's in the news, it's not something that's coming out of the judiciary. It's something that is coming out of the uh, Ministry of Home Affairs. So the integrated criminal justice system is interlinking several e-governance projects. Uh, it's interlinking the e-courts project at the judiciary, the e-prisons project with the prisons department, the e-police project, essentially digital police project, which uh, there have been many, but the previous one before uh, ICJS was the CCTNS, Crime and Criminal Networks and Systems. Uh, so you have the e-forensics, essentially all the forensics laboratories in India are interconnected. And you have the e-tribunals, e-journal justice. So you're interlinking a lot of these e-governance systems uh, to create according to MHA. This is not something that I am saying. According to MHA, they are using this to create 360 degree profiles of everyone inside the criminal justice system. Now, what would this interlinking of uh, system look like? Uh, it will look like essentially a series of dashboards. It's, if you're talking about data and data-driven governance, uh, this is about uh, allowing different arms of the criminal justice system to access each other's details via dashboards. I'm going to show you some of these dashboards, at least from what we know from some of the publicly available uh, Ministry of Home Affairs presentations. So as I was saying, ICJS essentially is a central repository of every individual in the criminal justice system. It's being implemented by the MHA. Uh, essentially, the NIC, uh, National Informatics Center, is the one developing it. Uh, but the governance control at some level for all the data is at the MHA. Uh, there is uh, oversight by NCRB. I, I don't think I should call it oversight, but some level of interaction between MHA and NCRB, which is part of MHA. And you have the judiciary's involvement because of the e-courts projects, because it's the judiciary which maintains the e-courts project. So their direct involvement, it's happening under their direction at some level as well, but it's being implemented by the MHA. And so the important question is, if you're trying to link these uh, databases, right? Like essentially all of these e-governance projects are databases. So how do you do that? You have to interlink them based on um, individual's unique identity. That's the only way you can interlink uh, these systems. Otherwise, it's hard to say track someone who's already a prisoner, who's already in the prison, but who has committed a past crime or uh, suddenly the police found out that a past crime which they were investing elsewhere is also linked to this person. The only way you can match all of these is if you can uniquely identify this individual inside the criminal justice system. So I'm not going to say that it's entirely based on Aadhaar, uh, but the idea essentially is that you have to uniquely identify every individual in your criminal justice system. So this is how it looks like uh, it's a it's a visualization that i took from a mha magazine uh, it's in it's listed in the reference section on the registration page there are a bunch of documents that if you want to go check back you can find this so the icjs system essentially as i was saying is going to interlink e codes cctns e prison uh, uh, you have the uh, prosecution, which is essentially the uh, Department of uh, Ministry of Law, I guess. And you have the forensic laboratories. And you have access for other agencies like the National Investigation Agency, which is the, which can use this data to identify criminals. Uh, but all of this is based on what is called uh, pillars, uh, which is basically each of these systems become a pillar like police becomes a pillar, courts become a pillar, prisons become a pillar inside the criminal justice system. 
uh, what does this allow? It actually allows a pan-India-wide search of uh, criminals inside the criminal justice system. So search across the pillars data of CCTNS, ECO, C prisons, prosecution, NIA, etc. So they're using at some level NLP to try to text mine some of the court records and trying to generate some analytics uh, here. So it's the MHA which says every other time that this is going to allow this degree profiling of persons involved in various pillars and facility to tag or exchange the profile. Uh, and this is interesting because this whole idea of 360 degree profiling at some level, it emerges post the initiation of the ADA project for the state uh, resident data hubs or uh, even part of CCTNS, right? CCTNS was, okay, I'll get to what CCTNS is. Um, so yeah, so if you're talking about the, the history of police databases in India, uh, India has a vast history of uh, policing uh, documents, but most of them are not really organized. Uh, but the idea of using fingerprints uh, in policing goes back to colonial era. Uh, but what I know to some extent is the modern uh, police digitization efforts at some level took place inside various departments within MHA. But at, at the state police level, you have the AP police uh, interconnection of police stations uh, around 2000, 2003. This is the time when e-governance efforts were at a peak level in India. All of this was before the national e-governance plan. Then um, the Delhi police got its own network called the ZipNet network. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, then you have the CCTNS project, which comes out in 2009. Uh, it was part of the national e-governance plan. Uh, then uh, the integrated criminal justice system takes over CCTNS project in 2015. So essentially the integrated criminal justice system is an evolution of CCTNS. Uh, and because A, also the CCTNS project was getting delayed and it was the Ministry uh, of Home Affairs which actually proposed to the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs to uh, extend the CCTNS project and to further fund the ICJS uh, project around 2015. Now, this is when the Cabinet actually approved it. So the CCTNS is essentially the interlinking of all police stations. Uh, this this happened in the backdrop of the Bombay attacks, okay? But it's the origin of interlinking of police stations is not something new. Uh, people always knew that uh, there were issues of inter-police department data sharing, like AP police won't share information with Tamil Nadu police, uh, uh, even though there could be issues at the border between these two states, right? So the information was always... Uh, in silos, and this kind of poses a problem for MHA. Uh, so, CCTNS kind of comes through the national e governance plan, but it kind of uh, it kind of gets fast tracked uh, uh, around the because of the Bombay attacks. Uh, so, you see that they are trying to interlink all of the police stations, and uh, the, it actually started with the coastal police stations because coasts were kind of a, the large the threat at that point of time. Uh, there are a bunch of documents around this uh, within the parliament if one wants to look at this history. Uh, but so the modern CCTNS database, again, it's, it's essentially a network, right? It's a crime and criminal tracking networks and systems. So it's, it's similar to ICJS network, how ICJS is a network of uh, various databases you would find that CCTNS is also a network of all police stations. So at, at the base layer, uh, there is a data sharing platform between police stations. But on top of that, each state police can collect information on their own. They can basically do more than what the MHA wants them to do. So the CCTNS at the base layer, part of its network, you have the missing children database uh, because you know, the children, when they go missing, it's not necessarily that they are in your particular jurisdiction. Uh, there are interstate gangs which are involved in this. So when the missing children database came in, it got integrated into CCTNS. But 
this at some level the system is also with the ministry of women and child development uh, the other important system the ccdns has is essentially they have this fingerprint recognition system with all the fingerprints which they have collected for forensics the upcoming system that's part of ccdns is facial recognition system you have wahan uh, database which is linked to ccdns you have fastag that's also linked to ccdns so any any of the modern uh, systems identity databases that are coming up they are linking them to ccdns uh, again going back to icjs now uh, icjs as the uh, post ccdns i think the mha understood how important for it to interlink databases so which is why they also kind of propose this interlinking of prisons and police departments because ccdns is only uh, interlinking of police it, it doesn't look at data that's available already available with the prisons department or with the general justice divisions or courts all of this is on the backdrop of uh, fingerprint uh, databases uh so this is how the information flow looks like so within the ccdns you have uh, fr numbers you have case uh, details uh at the courts again you have the case number you have the fr number but when when the prisoner say when the individual gets transferred from the police to prisons through court uh he gets a prisoner id uh also in all of this chain the moment you are part of this criminal justice system they try to collect your fingerprint details so this data becomes an important way to identify individuals so the way to uniquely identify individuals is again not necessarily on aadhar but it's based on fingerprints and because that's what the mha has been doing for a really long time uh this information is again intershared with the forensics department so you have a uh, integrated data sharing of uh, across the uh, criminal justice system uh this is the data flow that happens so this is from a presentation by uh, an nic official who was presenting it to the mh Uh, it's actually available on the registration page uh, if you're watching it on youtube or from elsewhere you can go to the registration page and check uh, the documents over there so so not all information goes to everyone okay so if you look at say fingerprint data it, it doesn't go to the court but it it does go to the prisons department uh, it it goes to the forensics department uh, it doesn't again go to the general justice so you have uh, at some level information is being shared on a need to need basis uh but it's being centralized uh, at the mh so this is what the icjs dashboard looks like uh, when you have to submit information uh, of an individual you submit his personal details his uh, other number pan card email id phone number driver's license uh, his fir numbers uh, part of the jurisdiction where they are the courts the forensics laboratories present details and once you go into the system uh, again this presentation was made uh, much earlier i think around 2015 when they probably proposed uh, this project uh, we we don't know in what form it is right now but this is the idea that they had in mind so when you click an individual you get all of his details from his passport aadhar number email id uh, voter card details again uh, see some of these requirements of data collection is important because if you are indeed a criminal or a prisoner uh, your uh, voting rights are taken away right so they need to actually supply this information to the election commission so that the election commission suspends this vote right so i am not sure if how that information sharing is happening here but that actually happens the election commission gets a list of all people criminals and they actually remove them from voter list so when you click on an individual you get all of his details and accordingly on different modes uh, depending upon who which uh, administrative official you are whether you are from the prisons department or the courts you get access to different information so when you click on police you get access to witness details the accused the victim the arrest details the bail details transit remand criminal history charge sheets complaint details 
So essentially, when you're talking about building these 360 degree profiles of individuals, so you're building those uh, via ICJS, and uh, uh, this is how this information looks like. So when you look, click at prison, you get this prison ID, the FR number, again, accused. Interestingly, they track visitors. So if you have visited any criminal in a prison, so you will have to, currently you'll have to give your other number. Uh, while they could say it's not me, uh, there is, it's not mandatory and all, but they actually force you to do something. So you have co-accused so that you know who are the partners uh, and you ensure that you're not put together. I don't know what sort of protocols they use, but essentially this information is being tracked. So if you are on bail or parole, your details are uh, there. Uh, essentially, this information then goes to the police, the nearest police department, uh, to essentially track the individual because he's on bail or parole. Um, movements to hospitals, inter-jail movements, all of this is essentially, which is tracked part of the prisons project, is now integrated with the ICJS project. So when you look at the court, you get details about the case, the summons, uh, uh, case transfer details, appeal stage details, court disposal, status of trials. Uh, so you also get what jail details. For, so for a judge, he actually gets to know what the police department is doing, what the prison's department is doing. So it's, it's a nice data for a judge to actually uh, understand the case better, I guess, uh, to understand criminal history of an individual. So at some level, I think uh, you're going towards this model where within the US criminal justice system, you've started seeing uh, your rating criminals, right? The potential for a crime to rehappen of an individual. At some level, uh, you are trying to profile these individuals and uh, we're not sure if they're going to rate them or if this is going to affect a judge's uh, decision uh, to whether to give him bail or not, but uh, it's it's all being tracked. Uh, so again, the fingerprints to pillars. This is the information that's being shared uh, to all the divisions. Uh, it's important to understand uh, when you become part of ICJS, there is a permanent identification number that's being created. Okay, and uh, and I'm not saying this is other or anything. So the uh, the criminal justice department, essentially uh, the MHA in this case, is creating an ID for you, which is the ID that they want to use to track every criminal. So that's the ID, your personal details, your uh, provisional crime numbers, uh, court cases, conviction dates, uh, jail uh, number, jail admission numbers, uh, fingerprints. Uh, and the way to create the permanent identification number essentially boils down to fingerprints. So the moment you become part of any court case, whether you're being investigated, uh, your fingerprints will essentially be collected. And that's the basis for the permanent identification number. So what's the current status of ICJS? It, it was proposed in 2015 to the cabinet. Uh, you have pilots that have been happening in Telangana, Delhi, Odisha, Bihar, and Rajasthan from 2018, 2019. So these are the fine known states that already have this implemented. I think they're scaling it up now uh, because for this to work, you have to have every other state's police departments, prisons departments to be interconnected. But what's actually live currently is the national search uh, for uh, already existing criminals at the NCRP through the digitalpolice.gov.in portal. So if you, if you are uh, from the police department or any of the departments which are part of ICJS, what you could do is you could visit the digitalpolice.gov.in and you can start uh, searching for criminals who are part of the criminal justice system. But ICJS is not just about uh, e-prisons, courts, or uh, CCTNS anymore, because CCTNS itself is being interlinked with missing children's database, the driver's registration databases, vehicle registration databases. Even though you're not a criminal, you're becoming part of this uh, criminal justice database because they're linked to CCTNS. Like, you may not be a criminal, uh, but because you have a, a driver's license and you have a 
vehicle that you have registered with the government and that's being linked to CDNS, they can pull this data on you at any point of time. So it's not no more about uh, criminal criminals or people who have committed crime. It's essentially anyone who's going to be interacting with any criminal, if you're visiting them, or even if you are an individual who is potentially has challans, right? Like vehicle uh, violations so through Wahan, all of that gets integrated into the criminal justice system. Uh, they have plans to link immigration and passport data. Uh, we are not yet sure to what extent this has happened. Uh, why is this important, right? Like uh, what happened in Telangana, for example, uh, uh, th this national search that they have uh, to allow people to search criminals kind of was piloted at some levels in Telangana. So what they essentially did, the Telangana police kind of went overboard uh, and started profiling every individual on the street. So when, when, when you become an accused in a crime, the, the first thing, as I was saying, they would collect your uh, fingerprints to know if you're an existing criminal. Uh, but with access to these systems, what the Telangana police did is they actually went on the street. They asked every individual who looked suspicious to give their uh, fingerprints. Uh, so I think by 2015 or 2016, MHA had this national automated fingerprint recognition system, which is part of CCTNS that went live. So you have the police department in Telangana, part of the pilot in 2018, doing all of this, right? Like, so in Telangana, the moment you enter a police station, your fingerprints are recorded to identify if you have a, if you have a criminal history. And that happens through the ICJS network. Uh, then you have uh, the automated facial recognition system that's upcoming part of CCTNS at the national level. But again, the pilot for it has already began in Telangana. And what you've witnessed in Telangana is that uh, post biometrics, which they were doing it as early as 2015, 2016, because the system went live in those days, uh, but the facial recognition system kind of went live in 2018. So you have every police with a mobile uh, tab who could identify anyone on the streets. Uh, but the problem is not that ICJS is limited to criminal justice uh, criminals or people who are part of the criminal justice network. It's interlinked to everything because in Telangana, uh, what you're witnessing is the police department not only has access to ICJS because all of this is at a base layer, right? Like policing is a state subject. Each state can essentially do whatever they want. Each state police can go uh, collect more details. So the Telangana police essentially uh, got access to everyone's uh, details uh, because Telangana has this new facial recognition based digital ID system. And that kind of actually came out because the police wanted access to data of every individual in the state. So these 360 degree databases, like if you're talking about the upcoming facial recognition system, uh, while they're all saying that it will be limited to criminals, but what we're witnessing is that increasingly the police, the MHA, the NCRP is actually asking every other department to start sharing information. So if you already have a driver's license, uh, you're part of their network because your photo details that are collected by the Ministry of Road Transport is already available for the MHA. Uh, I'm not bringing in Aadhaar anywhere here. We don't have to go into that conspiracy theory that it's all Aadhaar data, but it's identity data, right? right? Like any form of identity details, uh, it's biometrics at some level, which are at the heart of this whether it's your photo through facial recognition, whether your fingerprints, uh, it's being collected. All of this is being happening without a law. Uh, this directly violates the Supreme Court judgment on the right to privacy uh, and the Supreme Court judgment on other, uh, where the judgment essentially says that there is no possibility of building 360 data, uh, degree databases in the country, right? Like, uh, extensively the idea of 360 degree databases were discussed during that judgment and the judiciary ignored it. 
but anything and everything that was discussed heavily in terms of these 360 degree databases uh, that most people feared might happen is actually happening and it's all live uh, and essentially icjs at the end of the day is yet another uh, 360 degree profile database and you are going to see more of this that are going to happen not necessarily from a economic uh, welfare point of view this is actually from the uh, surveillance point of view for the image